My shop has a ton of different types of tools to accomplish different tasks. I've got a full wood shop, metal shop, a machine shop, and actually even another room that I just added on which has my lasers, sewing machine, and clean work like that. Now having all these tools is great, but obviously I don't use every single one of them every day. Some tools go weeks, months, or even years between uses for specific projects, but there is a core group of things that I use pretty much every day here in my shop that I'd like to talk about today. So here are the tools I use every day. To start things off, I wanna talk about what I actually carry on me every day, kind of my EDC, which is all related to kind of efficiency and stuff that I've used the most over the years. So let's take a look. So I always carry basically these three things with me. The tape measure I usually have as well because it's always good to have a tape measure. But these three things I always carry. So this is a Leatherman Charge uh, titanium frame multi-tool. Now I've had a couple of these only because I've lost them. I've never broken one, but I really like this Leatherman. I've had a bunch of other Leathermans, um, but this one is really light. It has a ton of features in it. I think this is actually an older version, but it's got the, the little eyeglass screwdriver in there, which I feel like is like such a critical thing, especially if you ever have to do any kind of small work. And then I like that it has this little multi-bit screwdriver that you can swap out for a Phillips head or a flathead. It's got a wire cutter, a wire stripper, and a good knife on it. It's also just light and pretty compact. Uh, I really, really like this Leatherman of all the other ones I've ever tried. The other thing I always carry on me is a flashlight. Uh, this is an Olight. Uh, this is a Baton 4. This is actually, I guess, their newest version of the light. And I was lucky enough that Olight sent me this. I used to carry this one. Uh, which is the Baton 3. I've had a couple of these. What I like about this Baton 4 though the most, um, which I didn't know they had, was it actually has a charge indicator light on it. So it'll actually tell you how much battery it has left, which for someone like me, when I'm constantly working inside and outside and using different things, it's nice to know when something is charged or needs to be charged. And then this knife, which I've gotten a lot of questions about on YouTube from people seeing me use it, what brand it is and where it came from. I actually made this knife uh, about five or six years ago when I kind of first started into my shop. I really enjoy knife making and this is a titanium uh, liner lock. Um, this is a titanium liner lock folding knife that I made from scratch with a titanium clip, a CPM 154 blade and I have carried this every day since I made it. It has held up really well and it's inspired me. And it's really a proof of concept for me to know that if I make a folding knife, I can actually sell it and tell somebody confidently that they can carry it every day, use it as a pry bar, uh, use it for work, and it's gonna stand the test of time. This is riding on ball bearings, so it's always got that really nice flip even when it's dirty and heavily used. So this is what I'm carrying on me always. And what I get a lot of questions about is what I actually carry my tape measure in. So I'll show you that. So as a carpenter years ago, I would always carry my tape measure in my left front pocket. That was just always where it went. And then what I found was I was basically, not even so slowly, but destroying all my pants right here because the metal of the tape measure would destroy my pants. Plus, you know, this kind of bumps into things and it's not that secure. A lot of times my tape would fall off. And if you're wearing tool bags, uh, this just doesn't work. So what I found while working in the trades was this thing. This is called a glazer's pouch. And basically what this has in it is it has three spots for kind of a writing implement or a glass cutter can go in there. And then a little leather band that you can put your tape measure on. And this is just stitched leather. So this one, I carried for a long time and then I got a brand new one and I dyed it black so it'd be a little more kind of stealth. But I carry my tape measure on that pretty much every day. And what I really like about this is it keeps my pants from getting messed up uh, and it, it keeps it out of the way. I use this in my sort of professional life as a construction manager. I always carry a tape measure on me. I always carry a pen or a Sharpie and uh, it's nice. I can kind of tuck it away and it, it just looks a little bit cleaner. The other thing, there are a couple things that I don't love about this, and I'm actually in the process of kind of like designing and developing my own. But if you carry a tape every day, look into one of these glazers pouches because it's really a nice way to keep your 
pockets from getting destroyed. One of the things I really like about uh, the Olight flashlights too is I always wear a hat and you can very easily put an Olight on the brim of your hat and then you've got a little headlamp um, and you don't have to walk around carrying a headlamp. You can just clip this very small flashlight to your hat and you're good to go. So I really, really like these. Rechargeable uh, and very compact. The next item I think it's important to note that I use every day is PPE, personal protective equipment. So you'll always see me with a pair of safety glasses on. Um, I think that's really important. Preserving your vision is the most important thing you can do in a shop next to preserving your fingers. So I've always got a pair of safety glasses. What I've found with safety glasses is there is safety in numbers. So buying one or two really nice pairs of safety glasses is great, but the second that you can't find them, you're just gonna go on with your task without them. So what I do is I just buy a box of 20 of these 3M rated safety glasses. I throw them in a drawer and anytime that I can't find a pair of safety glasses, I just go into the drawer, pull out a new pair and put them on. Um, it is much better to have them on than to kind of safety squint. Uh, there's so many scenarios where I could have lost my vision due to a quick job that I thought I didn't need glasses for. So always with the safety glasses. The other thing that I've been really critical about for myself lately has been my respiratory protection. Um, I just had a baby, she's three months old when I'm filming this video, and not dying young was something that I always had on my mind. But now that I have a daughter and I'm watching her grow up, I wanna live and do this for a really long time. So I've been really trying to protect my lungs from particulates in the air. I have talked about these respirators before. This is the 3M quick latch flip down respirator. I really like these because they have this kind of quick latching mechanism that lowers the respirator, which is really comfortable. I'll show you how it works. So basically just by flipping that little latch, you can very quickly get this respirator on. Um, but I usually keep a beard and these can be kind of uncomfortable, especially when you're working and it's hot out or even it's cold out. So lately what I've been using is a powered respirator unit uh, called a PAPR unit. Now I have the one from Lincoln Electric. Basically what it is, is a kind of belt pack with a air intake filter on it with a HEPA filters and stuff in there. You power it on, you wear it like a belt. And then it uses a hose to connect to various types of hoods. So I have a clear grinding and sanding hood that I use if I'm turning something on the wood lathe or if I'm grinding metal. Uh, and then I also have a welding hood that flips up into a grinding hood. Um, these are not cheap. I'm not gonna stand here and tell you that you should go out and spend, I think they're over a thousand dollars for a PAPR setup. But let me tell you, I have been wearing them almost every time I come in the shop lately and I feel better the next day, and it's a dramatic and noticeable difference. Uh, recently, I've been restoring this trailer. It had a lot of old paint that I had to grind off and weld past, and I wore the FGS Papper for basically the entire thing, and I never had like the black boogers. I never got a headache from any of the paint fumes or anything like that, and it's really become part of my rotation that when I'm doing something, you know, any grinding, any welding, anything that's gonna be smoky, I just, throw the belt on, put on the PAPR unit, uh, put on my headphones and I'm ready to go. So if you work in the shop a lot and you really want to invest in your safety, look into a PAPR unit. There are tons of different brands. There are tons of different versions you can get and I'll put some links down below on some of the ones you can get on Amazon. I definitely think it's worth the money. Next thing I want to talk about is kind of layout and marking tools. Uh, these are things I use every day. Um, I've got the Fireball shims here, which are super useful in my metal shop, on my fixture table, but also in my wood shop. These are basically just precision ground shims of different thicknesses and they are magnetic, so you can stack them up. Uh, I found I get a ton of use out of these. They're a little expensive, um, but the alternative to these are various other measuring tools that I've got. One of the things I really love, and some machinist is just crying in his basement right now, is I use one, two, three blocks for everything. They are so cheap on Amazon. They're like 20 or 30 bucks. I use them as welding spacers. I use them as woodworking spacers. Uh, we use them as setup blocks all the time. And they're basically disposable at this price. And they're really, really helpful. They are precision ground to be three inches by two inches by one inch, obviously one, two, three. But they also make them in a magnitude larger. This is the two, four, six block, which I also use as a setup block. These are a little more expensive, but also really reasonable. And the fact that they are precision ground, they're perfectly 90 degrees in every direction, you can use them in so many different ways. Uh, aside from that, 
I really like this kind of Swanson combo square and speed square combo. You can get this on Amazon for like 10 bucks. And I'm always reaching for a good digital caliper that can convert to fractions. I know uh, some machinists will think that's a little hokey, but I do think it's useful when you're trying to get a reference on something and you can switch to a fraction. This one has an automatic off feature, which I like because the battery is not dead every time I reach for it. So I can just kind of throw this in the drawer and use it. Uh, there are versions of this and all these other squares. This is the giant fireball tools combo square that I've also been using a lot. But layout tools, good layout tools, good Sharpies that don't dry out can be super useful. And this is the kind of stuff that I'm reaching for every day when I'm laying out projects and doing work around the shop. So this one might not apply to everybody, but I absolutely use one of these angle grinders every single day. This is the slide lock variable speed Milwaukee angle grinder. Now I am already very heavily invested in Milwaukee tools. And uh, every now and then someone asked me why I picked Milwaukee over the other brands. And the answer is honestly in the battery. And it's, it's an interesting kind of story about efficiency. But when I started as a kind of carpenter handyman, uh, when I got out of college, cordless tool brands were really starting to develop and go into lithium ion batteries like what we use now. And what I noticed was that Milwaukee was the only brand that the batteries would tell you how much life they had, no matter which size you bought. So at the time, Makita and DeWalt had come out with batteries that had a gauge, but every single Milwaukee battery had this gauge. And when you are reaching for a tool in the back of your truck to go into a customer's house, if you can tell that that tool is charged or dead, it can save you time. So that's how I wound up with Milwaukee. Turns out they make some really good tools. This is the flathead grinder. I just made a video about this for getting into tight, hard to reach places. And this is just the regular variable speed cordless angle grinder. I really like these and I really like the slide lock in particular because it is convenient and easy to use with one hand. On the topic of grinders, the discs that I'm using most are these two. This is the Victograin, the CC Grind Solid. This is an absolutely incredible metal grinding disc. I made a whole video about this. I'll put a link in the little box up here. Um, these things eat metal like nothing I've ever used before. And I also use this one. This is the Polyfan Curve. These are both from Ferret Abrasives. The Polyfan Curve has abrasive that wraps around the front, front side, and actually even on the back. Both of these are amazing for doing metal work if you need to grind inside corners or if you need to remove large amounts of metal very quickly. Grab yourself these really, really good discs. A video about my shop would not be right without talking about the cornerstone of my wood shop, which is this Bosch miter saw. This is the axial glide saw. Now, when I bought this a couple of years ago, this was like the greatest innovation in woodworking because you could have a 12 inch sliding box saw that could go up against the wall. Uh, there's a couple different versions of this saw now, a couple different kind of variations on it. And I know uh, this saw doesn't have the best reputation for being super accurate, but I found if you keep it tuned, it's a really, really great piece of equipment. And I use this every single day in my wood shop. Uh, I did a little modification to mine that allows you to have basically a shadow cut line on it. I did a whole video about this. It was one of the first videos I ever did. And with that little mod, this saw is just awesome. Um, it gets me out of it's able to cut the big material when I need it, and it's also precise enough to cut small material. I've got some zero clearance tape on it, which is also pretty helpful and nice, uh, and I really just like this saw a lot. While we're here in my wood shop, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the sander that I use. Now, I have the Mirka Diros. Uh, I bought this used. It was a lot of money for me at the time, but honestly, I've gotten a ton of use out of it. I don't know that this is the best six inch sander on the market, but what I wanna say is that if you're doing any woodworking, look into getting a six inch sander versus a five inch sander. Everybody uses like the big box brand uh, five inch sanders, but you get a lot more sanding area out of a six inch sander. And if you sand a lot and you get something with this style profile. This type of sander is just so much more ergonomic. It's so much nicer on your hands. And that six inch disc size really gets work done a lot faster. You'll save time, you'll get a better result. I have mine hooked up to just a dust extractor that's under the table. But if you're gonna do any amount of woodworking, invest in your sanding setup. 
everybody hates sanding and if you can make it better, you'll absolutely realize that it was a worthwhile investment once you spend the money. So I use this sander pretty much every day on every single one of my woodworking projects and I do not regret the purchase at all. The only thing I will say is that I think the motor has come loose in my sander and it vibrates a lot and I cannot get a warranty on it because I bought it used. So just be careful where you spend your money and uh, pay attention to it as it kind of deteriorates because this is definitely not as nice as it was the day I bought it. So when I think about tools that I use every day, I really can't go far without talking about these little 12 volt drills. So I've had these 12 volt Milwaukee drills. I probably have five sets of them uh, in different generations as they've kind of evolved. Um, I moved away from 18 volt drill and driver a while ago just because these are so much more compact and easy to use. And now they are tiny. The drill is so small and so is the impact driver, but these things have been amazing. Uh, and then coupled with the right bits, uh, I like to use these double ended bits where it's like a Phillips on one side and a T25 on the other. There's pretty much anything in my shop or life that this can get done, but there's a couple other ones I carry on these as well. But these little drills are amazing. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive. You can get a set for about 200 bucks with batteries and a charger and all that. And they are strong enough to do 99% of the things that I need to do in my shop. Uh, I like that they increase the drill chuck size on this drill to half inch so I can even drill larger holes with it. I can use hole saws. And again, I mentioned the Milwaukee battery thing. Their 12 volt tools have a little battery indicator too. I've, I've said this in other videos, I'm not sponsored by Milwaukee. I just bought the tools that were the most convenient for me at the time. And, uh, and these things have been amazing. So I always use these. And thinking about cordless tools, um, I'm a big advocate of cordless tools. I've got a bunch of different things, angle grinders, die grinders. And one other thing that I think people are surprised by in my shop is there's a fair bit of Ryobi tools in my shop. And people look at Ryobi as kind of junk but I think some of their tools absolutely have an application. And one of my favorite tools that I use pretty much every day is this cordless, but a hybrid powered fan. And I call it hybrid because you can put a uh, extension cord right in the back. But I have maybe five of these and I use them for tons of different applications. They have a low and a high setting and uh, on a four amp hour battery, they'll run for about eight hours. They're great for like getting paint to dry and they're really good for removing fumes from whatever area you're working in. So if you're welding or grinding and you need to get smoke out of the way, these things will move air really well and they're pretty inexpensive. Uh, they're definitely a better purchase in my opinion than buying a box fan. Obviously they're not as large, but I really, really like these, which is why I have a bunch of them. Before I get to the last tool, there are a few other tools that are kind of around the shop that maybe I don't use every single day, but are really notable as great investments and things that have helped me really make a lot of money and profit here in my shop. Learning how to weld, I've talked about it before, was honestly the best skill I could have added to my resume. Uh, I use welding to make the majority of the income here at the shop, doing steel repairs and things like that and custom fabricating. Along with that, you know, cordless band saws, metal cutting saws, magnetic drills, I just did a video about those. My two by 72 grinder is an incredible tool to have in the shop. And then moving into the wood shop, my saw stop and my bandsaw have also been huge money makers and tools that I use all the time. Uh, investing in a saw stop was something that I did early on in my career here at the shop. I got a great deal at an auction and I don't regret it at all. Uh, it's absolutely an amazing piece of technology and definitely worth the money to bring into your shop. And then over in the machine shop, I spent a lot of money on a large lathe and a Bridgeport mill, which have helped me also learn and develop my skill set and really add to the things that I can build here in my workshop. There's a myriad of other tools here as well. Uh, like I said, not stuff I use every day, but stuff that I really love and stuff that's really helped me be profitable. And the last tool that I use absolutely every day is one I develop myself, which is the sticker on the back of my phone. So a couple of years ago, I wanted a quick way to convert decimals to fractions and also to metric. So I designed this laid out chart sticker that goes from 1 64th all the way up to one inch. And I've made them in a bunch of different sizes in stickers, in magnets, big and small. And I have carried one on the back of my phone. It started out as a printout that I would just 
clear packing tape to the back of my phone. And then I realized that if I got high quality stickers made, they would actually stand the test of time in a shop and kind of work environment. So I make and sell these stickers. I use this literally every day. If not the one on my phone, I use the one that's on my laptop, which is a little bit larger right next to the keypad. I use that one when I'm drafting or when I'm drawing on the computer, uh, building things, or even just buying hardware when I'm trying to understand the size between a fraction piece, a decimal, stuff like that. I developed the stickers to help me get work done and I've sold thousands of them to people who are also looking to more quickly use them as a reference. Hope this little list of tools I use every day was useful. If you wanna know anything about any of the other larger tools in my shop, leave a comment down below. I've got a bunch of great projects that I'm working on to start the new year and I'm really excited to be in this shop. Like I mentioned, I actually recently expanded the shop to, to a new room and I'm gonna be doing a full shop tour in the beginning of 2024 to kind of share this place. Uh, it's at the, I feel like it's finally at the point where I have everything I need and I'm really excited to get some cool projects done. So thanks for watching. Links to everything will be down below in the description. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. And if you wanna see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me right here on Instagram at Make Everything Shop. Happy holidays and I'll see you next time.